After her big fight with Annie and getting banned from eBay, Sophia's life has turned from sweet to bitter. Her customers have started wondering where Nasty Gal disappeared off to. While all Sophia can do is read their posts and wallow in her misery, she screams at the carolers outside her apartment. She sullenly checks her voicemail and finds a message from her dad, asking her if she will be home for Christmas and another one from Shane, saying that he hopes Annie and Sophia make up soon. He also invited Sophia to Chicago where he currently is on tour. Sophia starts to book a flight ticket to Chicago when Shane reminds her to bring a jacket along, and that is when the idea strikes her and Sophia books her ticket. Sophia flies to San Antonio and arrives at the address of the woman, to whom she had sold her very first vintage leather jacket. Sophia buys back her jacket for $2,000. Then when she tells the woman about how she was kicked off eBay because of some snakes, the woman suggests Sophia get payback. This leads Sophia to Gail's doorstep. Gail is shocked to see Sophia there and tries to sweet-talk her, but Sophia tells her that she knows it was her who got her kicked off eBay. With the pretenses dropped, Gail tells her it was just business and nothing personal, but Sophia threatens that Gail should watch her back. The two women get into an argument, and when Sophia still won't leave, Gail grabs her tightly in the circle of her arms, restraining her. She tells Sophia that she is a garbage person and maybe that is why her mother left her. Gail's words hit home, leaving the other girl completely stunned. At the airport, Sophia is reminded of her own mother as she watches a woman take care of her daughter. Sophia takes the next flight out to Kansas. She arrives at a theater showing, and there, she finds the woman she has been looking for. Sophia watches the woman with awe, and when the show ends, she goes in search of her. She asks about Kathleen Downing and is pointed in the direction of her makeup room. Sophia peeks inside the room but then loses her strength and is about to leave, when the woman spots her and calls her name. Sophia enters the room, greeting her mother with anticipation. Kathleen, who recognized Sophia in one look, seems so very delighted to see her daughter. She is in awe of how beautiful Sophia looks and wonders if Sophia has come there to yell at her. But Sophia assures her that she has not. She admires Sophia's look and loves the punk jacket she is wearing. Kathleen wishes she could have been more in touch with Sophia over the years but life got in the way. She invites Sophia for a cocktail because only alcohol can help this heavy moment. Kathleen takes Sophia along to the cast party to get some drinks. On the walkover, Kathleen tells Sophia more about her career, and how she is just waiting for that one lead role that will take her career to the next level. She tells her about Chuck, the artistic director of the theater, who keeps dropping hints to Kathleen that she could get the part of a main character in the next show after New Year's, and Kathleen seems to be excitedly looking forward to it. Sophia thinks Kathleen is very talented and will get the role but Kathleen doesn't think that talent helps moms land lead roles. When they enter the bar, Kathleen tells Sophia that she has told Chuck that she is in her mid-30s and so she can't introduce Sophia as her daughter. Sophia totally understands and promises to follow her lead. Kathleen introduces Sophia to Chuck and the rest of the theater group as her manicurist, and Sophia plays along to the role. Later, Kathleen flirts with Chuck for her benefit and returns to Sophia, rescuing her from one of the theater artists, who was trying to hit on the girl. Sophia finds out that Kathleen is very close to getting the part she wants and hypes her up. Sophia thinks Chuck seems like an okay guy, but Kathleen tells her that is not the case. He is absolutely disgusting. Sophia sees him cozying up with another woman at the pool table, and Kathleen recognizes her as Nikki, the new young actress in the company. When Sophia suggests that Nikki looks like she is threatening Kathleen's chances with Chuck, Kathleen decides to take matters into her own hands. A while later when she returns, Sophia finds out that Kathleen has landed the role of the main character, but for that, Kathleen will have to get intimate with Chuck in the washroom. Sophia is a little thrown off. A while later, Kathleen returns, having fulfilled her part. She takes a swig of some alcohol and ushers Sophia back out. While walking home, Kathleen tells Sophia more about her fun drunken adventures with her theater groups, and so Sophia finds out how her mother has been to so many cities and never settled in one place. Kathleen abruptly stops Sophia when she spots a tree by the roadside. They devise a plan to steal it because Kathleen does not have a Christmas tree at home. The two of them steal the tree and have a blast while they are at it. Later, at Kathleen's apartment, Kathleen still wants more alcohol to drink, and Sophia finally gathers the courage to ask her mother why she left her. She wonders if it was because she is a garbage person, but Kathleen assures her that it had nothing to do with Sophia. She just had to get out of that place and away from Sophia's father. Kathleen no longer felt happy or fulfilled with him anymore, because the man stopped believing in her. It is in his nature to crush people's dreams, and Sophia can relate to that on a deeply personal level. Kathleen gives Sophia some words of wisdom, the only one who can make you happy is you. And the words resonate deeply with Sophia. Like mother, like daughter, she thinks. Before going to bed, Kathleen asks Sophia to stay with her for a little longer, or as long as she wants to. The next morning, at rehearsal, Kathleen gets a shocker when she finds out that Chuck had never intended to give her the main lead's part. According to him, last night in the washroom was nothing but two actors letting off some steam. Kathleen is way too old to play the role of the main lead, 
and no matter what she said to him, Chuck knows that her age is 50. Kathleen feels betrayed and embarrassed and ends up having a huge outburst in front of everyone. When Chuck announces that the person to get the part is none other than Nikki, Kathleen is so outraged that she ends up cursing every member of the production while Sophia watches her mother unravel. She picks a fight with them and then quits the group and walks out of there with Sophia. When she gets home, Kathleen starts packing up to leave and move to another city. She doesn't know where, but she still invites Sophia to come with her. But much to her disappointment, Sophia already has a cab waiting to take her to the airport. Before Sophia leaves, she gives her jacket to Kathleen to keep as a token of love and strength. And then she leaves her mother without any resentment for her. She returns to Gail's house and stands in front of her yard, yodeling loudly. Gail comes out of her house, annoyed by Sophia's intrusion. But much to her surprise, Sophia does not fight with her. Instead, she first apologizes to Gail and then thanks her. This takes Gail by a huge shock. Sophia goes on to tell her that getting her kicked off eBay was the best gift Gail could have given her, because now she is going to do things the right way. She is done being a garbage person, and even though she can't get back on eBay, she is going to start her own site. And it will be a gamble, but it will be something to call her own thing. Sophia is full of hope and motivation as she walks away from her. While waiting for her flight, Sophia watches a father-daughter duo, and she fondly remembers her own father this time. She decides to return home and have a nice family Christmas dinner with her dad, setting aside any resentment she feels. At the New Year party, Sophia finally apologizes to Annie for everything that she did. The word sorry is written on her forehead as she tells Annie how much she misses her. But Annie is still upset with her and makes Sophia work a little for her forgiveness. Sophia groves a little, and, eventually, when Annie sees how genuine her feelings are, she gives in and forgives her friend. They are in tears as they hug each other. Once reunited with Annie, Sophia begins work on Nasty Gal's official website launch. In the official business meeting with Annie, Sophia lists the agenda. 1. Create a website. Sophia wants the website to be easy to use but also cool to look at. Now, since out of the two of them, neither one is a computer genius, Sophia has bought a book to learn how to make a website in three months. Agenda number 2 is to tell everyone and spread the word about Nasty Gal's return on April 4, 2008. And number three is to get enough inventory to start them off at the launch, and Sophia has her mind set on 100 pieces of one-of-a-kind clothing items. Currently, she has got 47 items, and so Annie draws a telethon thermometer on the wall for them to keep track of their inventory. Pumped with excitement, Sophia adjourns the meeting. Later that night, Sophia gets into bed with Shane who is already half asleep. He is awakened by Sophia's presence. He has had a long day at rehearsal, and Sophia's had a long day at work. Shane tells her that the band he is working with is doing well, and they might get to record an album. Meanwhile, Sophia worries about her launch and everything else that she has to do to get there. But before she can go off on a tangent, Shane calms her down and gets her to put her mind to rest. The next few weeks, Shane and Sophia get busy with their work. Annie and Sophia focus on gathering inventory and getting the photo shoots in, while Shane gets busy with the band rehearsals. The telethon thermometer starts to reach the goal, and amidst the stress, Sophia and Shane barely get to spend any time together. Sophia checks everything off her list except one, create a website. Despite reading up for months, Sophia is still having a hard time getting the website running. When Annie notices it, she decides to hire a web designer. Sophia only needs two more unique items to complete her goal of 100 pieces. She thinks hard about where to find the new stuff and then it hits her. She goes to Lionel and he helps Sophia get access to all the unclaimed luggage at the airport where he works. Annie is at the warehouse when Kavi, the web designer, shows up. A little weird and introverted, Kavi is not interested in Annie's attempt at making her feel welcome, and she straight away sets herself up under the stairs. Sophia returns, elated and victorious. She has got the last two items on her list, and now Annie can fill up the thermometer, crossing another thing off their list. Annie instantly adores the blue jumpsuit Sophia has scored and shows it to Kavi, who still shows little enthusiasm. Sophia is surprised to see the new girl, and Annie tells her about the web designer she hired because Sophia was struggling with the website. Sophia is not exactly on board at first, because they can't afford to pay anyone, but Annie convinces her that they need Kavi to design the website, since there isn't enough time left for the launch. And Kavi came considerably cheap. Sophia reluctantly agrees to this and hands over her vision for the website to Kavi. Sophia and Annie are proud of the progress they have made so far. Sophia's pipe dream seems within reach now. They attend Nathan's art showing where Sophia is reunited with Nathan and his mother. After the show ends, Nathan sadly concludes that he is done with art, or rather art is done with him. He feels exhausted after having worked for so long and still reaping no satisfactory results. The artist in him still remains dormant. His mother consoles him, and they together decide that Nathan will switch careers and take up dancing instead. 
Back at the warehouse, Kavi has some bad news for Sophia. The web address she wanted to use, nastygal.com, is already being used by an adult website and now Sophia is in deep waters. She doesn't know what to do as she has already spread the news about the launch and given out that exact web address to people. Annie tries to defuse the situation by suggesting that Sophia goes back to using nastygalvintage.com for her website, but Sophia does not want that. When Kavi shows Sophia a different website that she created, she doesn't like it and gets upset because it looks nothing like her vision. She fires Kavi. At night, Sophia returns home and slips into bed with Shane. He's asleep and she hugs him tight, waking him up and telling him about her worries and about Kavi ruining the website. But when Shane can't remember who Kavi is, Sophia gets a little annoyed because she told him about her the night before. The stress of their individual careers starts to drive the couple distant from each other. Sophia still worries about everything she has to do before the launch. She feels like she is messing up things and nothing is the way she needs it to be. Everything is just a little off. Shane tells her that she is perfect and a little off too, and so whatever will happen will be great. Sophia feels comforted for a while and snuggles close to him. The next morning, Sophia is walking down the street when she sees a woman wearing the same jumpsuit that she was going to launch on her website. Later, she finds out that the same item is being sold by a big brand at multiple retail outlets, and there is absolutely nothing unique about it. Sophia feels so frustrated by this setback. She goes back to her warehouse in an enraged state and throws away all the jumpsuits and everything else that seems similar to the items in that store. Annie gets Sophia to calm down but the girl is inconsolable, especially when she spots Kavi back at work. But Annie convinces a spiraling Sophia that they really need Kavi's help. Sophia panics about all that they have to do and she doesn't think they can even make the launch date at this rate, they have got to push it all back. Annie screams some sense into her because if they do that, they'll go broke. That realization makes Sophia break down. She can't deal with this happening, she can't afford to fail but what if she does? What if she turns out like Nathan and all of her effort ends up going to waste? She fears being rejected and thinks she needs to find something else to do with her life. Sophie continues to have a big meltdown but Annie is with her through it and she very kindly informs Sophia that she can't do anything else in her life but this. This whole idea is all because of her, it is her dream and it won't die. Regardless of what happens after the website is up, Sophia would have succeeded either way because she is a woman who started a business from nothing, all by herself, and that is reason enough for her to be a huge success. She tells her that she can't quit just yet and assures her that her business will work out. Annie's words offer Sophia comfort and warmth in the storm of uncertainty, and self-doubt in her mind starts to clear up. Annie suggests that she take the day off and treat herself and spend some time with Shane. It's been a while since Sophia and Shane have spent some intimate time together, and Annie thinks it would help Sophia clear up her mind. Sophia thanks Annie for her unconditional support and then goes to visit Shane. But when she arrives at the studio, Sophia's world comes crashing down at her feet when she catches Shane cheating on her. That night when Shane wakes up, he finds Sophia already in bed, but this time, she did not bother with him. 